Hey, what's up YouTube, it's Adam here. Uh, today we're gonna do a car video. Uh, specifically, we're gonna be talking about uh, Kelly Blue Book, how it works, and why, in my personal opinion, why they should get rid of the private party values that they show. So here we go. All right, hey guys. So here we go. I'm on Kelly Blue Book's website. Now say you're uh, shopping for a car, you wanna trade in your vehicle, or say for instance, you just wanna sell your vehicle. Maybe you inherited a, a vehicle or you didn't wanna trade your car when you bought your new car, you wanted to still have an extra car for a couple months or for whatever reason. Whatever your reasons may be, you have a car, you wanna sell it, you wanna know what it's worth, okay? So today we're gonna go a little in depth and I'm gonna be giving you uh, some of my some insider information from me being in the car business um, just to give you a little backstory I've been in the business since 2011 and um, I now currently uh, work for a dot-com website that specializes in buying and selling cars and uh, I started off at a, at a rinky-dink little used car lot that was an offshoot of a, a Chrysler franchise dealership and uh, you know, worked my way up and uh, eventually ended up out here in Los Angeles working for a dot com, uh, which I love doing. It's a whole new ball game doing it that way uh, and a whole other level of amount of volume of vehicles that I see on a daily basis and that I have to get values for and actually have to do very quickly. Uh, now the way that I do it for my job is I look at the Mannheim uh, auction results. Mannheim is the largest uh, nationwide uh, auction network uh, for the United States anyways there are other auctions as well but this is one of the own this is one of the largest ones uh, and they they show their values they show their actual transactions to people that are dealers uh, that pay for the the service to see this uh, information now a dealership when they go to evaluate your car they're gonna look at Kelly Blue Book NADA Black Book and they will also look at Mannheim auction results, uh, which from here on out I'm going to call MMR. That's the uh, that's the uh, abbreviated version. That's what we call it in the business MMR. Uh, now the one that most people know and use, and the one that I hear most of my customers talk to me about is Kelly Blue Book, and it's an it's an unfortunate thing because when someone comes and gets in front of me and they tell me a value that they think their car is worth, it puts me in a, in a difficult position because I then have to educate the customer about the proper way of really how to get a better idea of the market value, the current market value for your vehicle. A lot of people have their own ideas of how to value the car um, and I've heard a lot of different things. After doing it for so long and dealing with so many people, I've seen a lot of similarities. Uh, which I'm not going to dive into too much in this video. So most people, they go to Kelly Blue Book to look up a value for the car. This is the one that everyone knows. Um, I want to show you the proper way to use Kelly Blue Book so that you can actually properly get a good idea for the value of your vehicle so that way you don't get in front of a car salesperson and feel insulted when they give you a much lower price. Now I'm going to give you a little idea here of how most people use Kelly Blue Book to get a value for their car. We're gonna use my vehicle uh, as an example here. I drive a 2008 Jeep Wrangler, two door, and it's a X, which is the base model. So here we go, we're gonna go to Jeep. Here we go, Wrangler. I have about 83,000 miles on my Jeep right now. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. We're gonna hit next. Okay, now it wants me to put in the zip code. Now there's a reason why this is important to put in the zip code because different uh, areas will bring different money for your vehicle. Uh, the Northeast, is, for example, majority of those cars that go into the used market have rust underneath, which is a pretty big devaluation to the vehicle's uh, overall value. Uh, I live in sunny California, sunny Southern California. Uh, we have the highest values for vehicles because they're usually the most clean. Uh, although one of the biggest things that we see here in this area is sun fading. Uh, which can be easily prevented if you wax your car regularly. So we're gonna look up the export two door. And we're gonna hit next here. I'm just gonna click C value with standard equipment. Now, what one of the things that people do is they add all this stuff onto their vehicle. Now, if you chose 
the right trim level for your vehicle. Say, for example, mine's an X, right? They also have the Sahara and they have the Rubicon. Uh, if you chose the correct trim style, adding additional options, all it does is it shows a higher value for the vehicle, but those options have already been included because that's what comes as part of the package for your car. Now, yes, there are a few additional options. Say, for example, on my Jeep, uh, I do have the hard top, which is an additional option. I do have the larger wheels, and I also have the power doors and locks. I'm sorry, the power windows and locks. Um, but the thing is, any dealer that you go to, even CarMax, this is how they're gonna rate the vehicle. Now, my vehicle's in fairly decent condition, but here's the thing. You have to look at, they put these percentages here for a reason. Now, most people put in excellent. They think their car is pristine because obviously you as the, the customer wanting to sell your vehicle, you want the most money that you can get for your car. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you don't want to go into a dealership with unrealistic expectations, especially if you're trying to put together a deal. The more informed you are, the more properly informed that you are, the better off you're going to be. Putting excellent is absolutely useless. The only way you would set excellent is if you bought that car like six months ago and you drove it like 3,000 miles and it doesn't have a single little tiny little, little bit of a scratch on it at all, okay? Even if you have some parking lot dings on your doors and everything else is perfect on that vehicle, it would be considered very good condition. Now I have a fairly large dent about the size of a softball on my bumper, on my front bumper. And my bumpers have started to fade. It's a 2008. Um, they're not as uh, pristinely black as they should be on most Wranglers. Um, I would not consider my Jeep in good condition. When I do go to eventually sell my Jeep, I am going to clean it up to make it a very good to very good vehicle. Um, but right now, currently, my Jeep is not. It has rust underneath because it was a north, northern car. I have a large dent from off-roading. I think that's about it. I'd have to go look at it, but I'm going to set it as fair condition because that's what it is. All right. Also, I have, yeah, I have some minor dents on the hood from some stucco that dropped on it. All right. This right here, I just put undecided. This is something new that Kelly Blue Book added, I've noticed uh, recently. I think it's more so they can get an idea of what they're going to market to you in the ads on the website. All right, so right now they're calculating the Blue Book value. Now, the way that Blue Book works is they look up values, they look up your values based on the same thing, the, the Mannheim auctions. They also pull from some other sources as well. The other thing is though, they also have computer algorithms that take a guess at what the value is. And when that, when they do that, that's when you, when you click this sell to private party, you should always click trade in to dealer that will show you the more realistic number for the vehicle. Right now, the trade in range that they're saying my Jeep is worth is 11,000 to 12, 630. Okay. The current auction value for my Jeep. I just looked at it about a week ago. I, I keep up on what it is, is about 14,500. Okay. A dealership will probably try to sell my exact Jeep for about $17,000 to $18,000 retail. That's what we would call full retail or high retail. Okay. The reason a dealership can get away with that is because a lot of dealerships will give you even a, as a, you know, an eight year old vehicle like mine, they'll probably still give you like a two month, a three month warranty through their, their own dealership. They may also, they're, they're going to recondition the vehicle fully too. They usually spend quite a few hundred dollars reconditioning most legitimate nicer dealerships will spend a few hundred dollars reconditioning the vehicle. Like they'll completely uh, shampoo the carpets. Uh, it's going to get a, a nice wax and they're going to buff out some of the scratches. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff is going to be cleaned up. Like on my Jeep uh, where the, where the fenders are, they're plastic and they're fading out in their color. They take like a blowtorch to it uh, to, to shine them back up again. Um, so, there is a level of exchange that they're putting into the vehicle as well so that they can ask for that kind of money. Not only that, but they can finance you for the vehicle. A private party can't do that. So realistically, if I was going to go into a dealership, uh, I would expect that they would probably hit me at the low number of 11,000. Uh, I know because I'm in the inside that they sell at auction for about 14, five. Um, I also know that sometimes they would stretch a little bit, especially in a Jeep. And especially if it's in clean condition with low miles, they would be a little bit more apt to stretch on something like that. Uh, so when I bring my Jeep in to sell it, if I were to bring it in now, 
but I was gonna, but I cleaned it up before I brought it into them to save them from having to recondition the vehicle. Um, I could probably pressure them into giving me like maybe 15,000 for my Jeep. So here's the thing. When you click sell the private party, this is why private party, uh, the, the values that they show is an unrealistic figure that they're giving you. And here's why. When you as a private party are going to buy a vehicle, say for example, uh, you're looking on Craigslist and you want to go get a car. Why are you looking through Craigslist instead of going to a dealer? Think about that for a second. Most likely the reason why you want to buy private party is because you're looking to get a good deal. You don't want to go to a dealer because you know the dealer is going to ask all the money. This is one of the things that I run into all the time. People, they, they contact me, they don't like my figure. A lot of times they look at Kelly Blue Book and they do something like this. Actually, furthermore, this is more or less what a lot of people do. They click add additional options. So next they're going to go through all these things right here. Okay, mechanical. All right, well, mine is a manual. That actually drops the value. Oh, look at it. All this stuff's already selected. Oh, yeah, remember what I was talking about? Your trim level will come with certain stuff. There it is right there. It's already pre-selected. KBB automatically takes it into account. Now, you bought your car, and it has the premium sound system. I want to be honest with you, it does not really add all that much value because most people don't care. Maybe you care but majority of people do not, some do. And if you're one of those people, you're one of the few. So premium sound. Uh, my vehicle does not come with navigation, does not have a navigation, obviously I wouldn't click that. Uh, I don't even have the premium sound in my vehicle, okay? Oh, you know what? Mine is MP3, but you know what? It's not multi-disc, so we're gonna have to keep that there. Do I have air conditioning? Yes, I do. Do I have leather? No. Do I have a rear seat? Well, yeah, of course. Do I have parking sensors? No. Do I have dual airbags? Yeah, I do. Do I have a roof rack? No. Do I have a towing package? Yeah, I have the towing package. Most of the Jeeps out there, I'm going to tell you, they have the towing package on them. So the values that you're seeing was pulled from transactions. Putting this on here is just guesstimates that they start adding. More than likely, though, the transactions, the number that you just saw earlier, most of those vehicles that they pull those transactions from probably had a towing package on them. Um, I do have the alloy wheels. They're not oversized off-road tires. I do have the hard top. I don't have a soft top. I do not have the privacy glass. I do have the fog lights. I don't have a custom. I don't have that. I do have running boards. Okay. Uh, color of my vehicle is black. And I'm going to tell you right now, there are only a select few vehicles where it matters what color it is. And that is because of whether or not it can be shipped overseas. There are certain colors that are sought after overseas. And that's only on certain year make and model vehicles. Uh, one of which would be like a 2001 Lexus RX 300. If it's white, it'll bring more money. If it's in decent condition and running condition, it's something they can resell to someone in Africa and ship it out. Okay, now let's say like, oh, you know what? Yeah, just a couple minor dings. It's actually very good condition. It's not excellent, it's not perfect, but it's got, but it, my car is really not in very good condition and no one is gonna look at it like that. Even a private party looking to buy it is going to point out this huge dent in the bumper. And they say, that's not good. The whole bumper needs to be replaced. You can't pull that out. It's like $300 for a new bumper. Oh, and then it's like, oh, well, I'm going to sell private parties. Let's see what private party is. And then here we go. We get this $15,124 showing for a private party value of my Jeep. Well, here's the thing, guys. My Jeep in its current condition right now is not actually worth that. I can say that because I am a professional. And I know what the actual market value of my vehicle is. And no one would pay me that. If I brought this to CarMax, they would not pay me this money. I can tell you that right now because I know how they value cars. They will get an average between Kelly Blue Book, NADA, and the MMR, as I mentioned earlier, is the auction results. They'll get an average of those numbers and they're gonna realistically look at it, trade into dealer, and they're gonna look at it right here, all right? So, there you have it. Um, this is why I think they need to just take out sell the private party. Because here's the thing, you're gonna look that up, you're gonna list it on Craigslist, and you want, so you want good money for your car. So you're gonna, and you, then you're also thinking with, well, people are gonna try to negotiate me down. I want the real value of 15,000. So then you list it for like 16, five, 17,000. I see it on Craigslist all the time. You know, you list it for that because you, you, you know that people are gonna negotiate, that, negotiate you down, right? 
So here's the thing. A lot of people will come across um, my lines and they'll get in front of me and they're going to say, well, uh, I'm seeing them selling on Craigslist for 17.5. And I'm looking at the auction results of 14.5. And then they've told me some of the things that are wrong. And I'm like, I can only pay you like $12,000, you know? And then they get really mad because I'm like $5,500 behind what they want. And they think I'm trying to be some scumbag uh, salesman, which I'm not. I'm being realistic. There are, I would say 80% of the people do understand. Um, I have a way of, of at least being nice of how I explain it. Um, and most people are, are pretty smart and they can see the, the logic and the sense behind what I'm trying to, to show them. Some people though are kind of nasty people. So I'm hoping that uh, maybe you folks that are out there that think like this, maybe I can kind of sway you a little bit to, to thinking a little bit more realistically because, uh, and I get this every day. I get people that um, they call me up and I look at the notes and we talk to them. I had one today, good, good example here. I had someone who had a 2010 uh, Infiniti G37 for sale, uh, had 45,000 miles on it. Sorry, it had 69,000 miles on it, which is actually pretty high miles for one of those cars. Most time on those higher end vehicles, they have lower miles. They usually have less than 10,000 miles a year that are driven because those types of vehicles usually are not daily drivers for some people that own them. Or they might be a daily driver, but those people don't usually drive as much. They live closer to home. Whatever reason, the average usually is less than 10,000 on a nicer car like that. I had this guy, he came into me, and this guy has a salvage title on his vehicle. He talked to us about two months prior. I put his phone number in our system. I see that he talked to us two months prior. As a vehicle ages, even month by month, especially on a newer vehicle, it loses value on a weekly basis. That's why most dealerships will only give you an appraisal that will last for seven days because the market changes that fast because all dealers look at MMR and every week there is auctions and every week they go down little by little the value of the vehicle. A vehicle is not an asset. A vehicle is what you would call a liability. It loses value, depreciates in value. It is not real estate. It is not a house. Okay. New models come out that are much better, much nicer, and usually for about the same price as the previous year, fairly close. Sometimes they do raise that. They obviously they adjust for inflation. So that drops the, the vehicle's value from the year prior, especially as you put miles on it. But even if you don't change the miles, it still depreciates because it's getting older and older. Now there are some exceptions when you're getting into classics, but not all classics raise in value. There's only a certain types. It just depends on what the market is doing. You have to be able to look at what the market is for the vehicle. So this guy called up. I asked him how much he wanted. He's like, well, what was your offer? What was your offer? I was like, well, sir, my offer is not going to be the same. You have a newer vehicle, but it also has a salvage title. That means this vehicle was destroyed so bad that it most likely has frame damage to it underneath all the cosmetic repairs, all the body panels that were put on. But it was wrecked so bad that an insurance company decided not to fix it, but to total loss it because it was going to be way more to fix it than to just total loss it out and pay out for a new car. It would have cost more than its value because it was wrecked so bad, or it was deemed unsafe to be repaired and to continue driving. An insurance company does not want to repair your vehicle if it'll be unsafe to drive after the fact, because then you have a problem with that car, you get in an accident, they have to shell out more money. It's a business decision on their ends. This guy wants, now he wants $10,000. Two months prior, we offered him $6,500. That was the salvage value for his car. And I said, well, sir, we're obviously gonna be much lower than that now. We're now two months later, we're getting out of the summer selling season, we're getting now into the fall, where the market slows down. Your vehicle now is only worth $5,500. And you've also put another 10,000 more miles on the vehicle. And so here's this guy, and I see this all the time. He has been sitting on this car trying to sell it for two months, two months, trying to get all the money he can get for it. He has not budged on his price. He has stayed the same on his price. 
You want ten thousand dollars for a salvage titled car? A salvage titled vehicle only goes for twenty five percent of its value, in comparison to a clean titled vehicle, around twenty five percent. You have to look at the salvage auctions. Now, most people don't have access to that kind of information. I understand that. Um, luckily, I do. You call a company like myself, um, or you go to a CarMax, and CarMax will give you the real offer for your car. And if it's a salvage title, you'll get the actual offer and the actual market value for your vehicle. They're not out there to rape and pillage. They are very standardized in what they offer and what they sell their vehicles for. So guys, um, I could keep going on and on and on and on about this. We're already at 23 minutes here. I don't want to bore the hell out of you guys. I just wanted to kind of inform a little bit um, and hopefully uh, educate you to, to make some better decisions when you're buying cars. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. Um, if you feel like this is going to be very helpful for you, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you're one of those nasty people that are just retarded, like that guy with that salvaged vehicle that called me today, uh, give me a thumbs down and um, off, we, off you go. And you know you can keep uh, trying to sell your car for a retarded amount of money a year later because no one wants to buy it because you're asking retarded money for your car. Also, if you want to see more content like this or any of the other stuff I do, I have a huge variety type channel here. Uh, I do video games, uh, music, uh, car stuff, uh, just anything and everything uh, that I can think of. So uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Thanks for watching, guys.